Today, we'll explore microtia, a congenital deformity of the external ear, and review two classification systems that help categorize its severity, the Weirda and Marx classifications. Microtia is a congenital condition where the external ear is underdeveloped. It can range from a slightly smaller ear to a complete absence of external ear structures. This deformity occurs in about 1 in 5,000 to 7,000 births and is often associated with oral atresia, where the ear canal is either narrow or absent, causing conductive hearing loss. Types of microtia are typically categorized into four grades. Grade I, the external ear is smaller than usual, but retains most of the normal features, such as the helix, lobule, and tragus. Grade two, some parts of the ear are missing, often with a narrowed or closed ear canal, leading to hearing loss. Grade three, the ear structure is severely underdeveloped, appearing as a small remnant of cartilage or soft tissue. In this grade, the ear canal is usually absent. Onotia, this is the most severe form, where there is a complete absence of the external ear and ear canal. The Weirda classification focuses on the severity of oral atresia, providing a more detailed understanding of the hearing implications and guiding treatment decisions. It is divided into three classes. Class one, the external ear canal is narrow but present. There's usually a mild conductive hearing loss and reconstruction or amplification, such as hearing aids, can improve hearing. Class two, the ear canal is absent or severely narrowed, leading to moderate to severe conductive hearing loss. Surgical options include canaloplasty or bone-anchored hearing aids, Baja, depending on the patient's anatomy. Class three, there is complete oral atresia with no external auditory canal, causing significant hearing loss. Bone conduction hearing devices are often recommended, and canaloplasty is generally not an option due to the lack of necessary structures. The Marx classification divides microtia into more specific categories based on the degree of external ear deformity. This system is helpful for surgical planning and classifying the severity of the external malformation. Type one, the ear is slightly smaller, but most of the structures like the helix, tragus, and lobule are present. This type can often be reconstructed through minor surgical interventions, such as rib cartilage grafts. Type two, the ear is significantly smaller and misshapen, with several structures either missing or deformed. Patients may require more extensive ear reconstruction, which can include multiple stages of surgery, typically starting at age six or seven. Type three, a severe deformity where the ear is reduced to a vertical stump of cartilage or tissue. In this type, complete ear reconstruction, usually using rib cartilage, is necessary. This often involves stage surgery to recreate a natural-looking ear. Onotia, no external ear or ear canal, is present. This type requires both ear reconstruction and hearing restoration interventions, such as bone-anchored hearing aids, Baja. Patients with microtia can present with varying degrees of hearing loss, depending on the severity of their oral atresia. In cases with a functioning inner ear, bone conduction hearing aids like Baja can greatly improve quality of life. Surgical reconstruction is often performed for aesthetic reasons, but can also improve auditory function. The timing of surgery is critical, with ear reconstruction typically beginning around age six when the ear has reached about 85% of its adult size. Treatment options include hearing restoration, ear reconstruction, or prosthetics. Bone-anchored hearing aids or cochlear implants may be recommended for those with severe hearing loss. For ear reconstruction, rib cartilage or synthetic implants are typically used. For those who are not candidates for surgery, Prosthetic ears offer an alternative solution. Understanding both the Weirda and Marx classifications allows for better treatment planning, especially when considering both aesthetic and functional outcomes. Each case of microtia is unique, and treatment decisions are tailored to the individual's anatomy, hearing status, and personal goals.